Welcome. This is Avital Eidenbaum from Studio 5 Innovation. I want to thank Schweiki Media for giving us this opportunity to bring you the world of social media in a language like you've never heard before, and that's to diet and exercise. And it's what we call organic social media. And you can find out more on our website at Studio 5 Innovation. But let's begin with the presentation. Wonder what is organic social media? And before we can talk about what it is, first let me cover what it's not. And what it's not is some people think that organic social media, um, certain traffic you get on your website, organic social media is not about buying likes, generating false testimonies, or cheating Google rankings. You may say, of course, that's what social media is. You can see why some businesses may consider these avenues in order to get more likes, more rankings for their website. But organic social media? Organic social media is social media marketing the right way. But in order to understand how to use Use organic social media. First, we have to understand what it exactly is. And first, we need to get a healthy body. We need to understand what are the positive attributes that we're already doing. What are we doing right on our website? What are we doing right on our social platforms? And so we can get an idea of what are our problem areas? What do we need to improve? What do we now to take action? But one that we have to be clear is we need to set realistic goals for success. Action now to get a healthy social media lifestyle. So the problem that we suffer from, and in the diet world, it's the same thing. It's what I call the numbers disease. You know, if many women in America, no matter what we do, we always put a number on the scale to say a different number. And what is the same problem in social media? We are so obsessed with our number of likes on our Facebook page, number of followers that we have on our Twitter feed, that when that becomes our ultimate focus, it's easy to lose track of what our real goals are and how to achieve a healthy, organic social media body. So organic social media body. Well, first, it's a healthy brain, and that's the website. Health are your social platforms. Are you on one social platform? Are you on all of them? Whichever social platforms you participate in, you want to be sure they're optimized and integrated with your website and with each other. And what kind of engagement are you including in your social platforms? What are you posting on your Facebook page? What blog posts on your website? Are they integrated with each other? You always want to be sure that even when you achieve a healthy media body, you are engaging in healthy activity and quality content. Those two are the biggest factors in getting an organic social media body. But let's talk about what a healthy website is. And there's two things that you can have on the home page of your website that can affect is it a website. Having a blog is the most important thing because it helps rank with SEO. Do you have a contact page? You are surprised how many home page websites contact page. You want people to get in touch with you. A healthy website includes a contact page. Is it responsive? What we learned from 2012 is that more and more users are using their mobile devices to shop online, to check their email, and to uh, communicate in various ways. And a responsive website is very necessary in these days to um, to an uh, audience that uses their mobile device. You're on Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter, but do you have those links on the home page of your website to encourage your readers to interact with you on them? And do you have a newsletter? Do you have something? That's going to keep your reader on your site to take action to do business with you or maybe to find out more about you or to sign up your newsletter. These are some things that help make a healthy website. But part of it. Now if you want a social media six pack, you're going to optimize and integrate 
each one of these social platforms. Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Twitter, and YouTube. Now that daunting task and maybe a social media six pack isn't your goal right now, but let's work on Facebook to give you an idea of some of the things you can do in order to optimize your social media presence. With your Facebook page, you want to have a clear cover photo that relates to your brand and represents your company well. You are surprised how many people miss this opportunity with their readers. Now, do you have a newsletter? Do you have a report that people can download in order to take action when they're on their page beyond just clicking the like button? And your profiles are you on other social platforms. You'd be surprised with Facebook application out easy it is to add other social platforms, but yet businesses fail to take this key opportunity with their peers. Various forms of activity and healthy content that you can engage in. Audience. As well, for example, are you posting one blog a week, one blog a month? Quantity is key, but there's various forms of activity that you can be doing in order to increase your engagement. A newsletter, a monthly newsletter. Do you have a week news newsletter? Do your feed know when they're going to hear from you? And social posts, are you posting every day? Are you posting weekly? Posting really depends on what your audience can handle. Some may want one post a week and that's it. But depending on your goals and what your audience can handle, active content are key essential ingredients in organic social media presence. Organic social media body, there's three meals a day. Just like we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's three key meals in your organic social media body is to educate your audience and retain. Those are the three things they're looking for that's going to get them to like, comment, share, and most importantly, to keep coming back. But this lunch and dinner, we need to be a little bit more specific about what kinds of content we can be putting in our engagement. So these are the healthy portions. And just there's a right way and a long way to eat, there's a right way and a long way to post in your social media presence. that draws your fans is relevant. What are you posting? Is it relevant to your business? Is it what you would expect to hear from you? from a real estate agent isn't very relevant, but what kind of value does it offer your readers? And that's the second part of a healthy portion. Then action. You're giving them great content, but what are they supposed to do with it? Ultimately, you want it to lead to traffic and conversions to go up to your website, so maybe they'll make a purchase, maybe they'll show your information from a friend, but they need to have call to action in order to do something with that post. And it's happening. We're in such a busy society, we don't have time to even look beyond two words post. And our fans are having less time to listen to anything that we're putting out. So we have to be sure it draws their attention in a very concise, consistent manner that's relevant to our brand. Now, a lot of information. So let's do a quick social media recap. First, get a healthy website. That's the brain of your website, where you want eventually to send all traffic to, whether it's from your blood or your heart. Everything's going back to your website. You want to have these social platforms. Maybe you can't get a social media six-pack right now, but which platforms can you handle? Many people want to just stick with the Facebook page before venturing off into other platforms like Twitter or Google+. And engagement. Do you have a newsletter? In your list, what kind of posts are you sending out? Do you have a schedule to send out? What is it? Are you just winging it and taking it day by day, or do you really have a set schedule? What kind of content are you posting in your social platforms? Are you just retweeting and reposting what everyone else is saying, or are you trying to come up with something original that's key to what your readers want to hear from you? Your fitness test, the next steps for obtaining an organic social media body is first to get a healthy body. Some areas that you need to improve on, or 
pretty good where you are right now. If not, consider detox or boot camp. First, optimizing your social platform. Even if you're not going to be active on Google+, set up a Google Plus page. So if one of your fans is using Google Plus and finds you there, can get in contact with you. Realistic goals. We all want to be an Olympic athlete and look like a supermodel in comparison to our social media presence. But can we realistically achieve it if we're not spending hours a day on it? If you have one hour a day or even 15 minutes a day, what can you realistically accomplish? Baby steps are fine. And the things that you decide to do, you want to stick with it. And get for it if you need it. Do you need to have a social media strategist look at your presence to help you save time and focus on platforms where your fans are? Thank you for the presentation. And um, any questions and answers, uh, we can take it now. The biggest question I get people to ask me is, is Facebook still worth um, businesses? And many people will argue because uh, Facebook page reach has dropped drastically. And Facebook, uh, people don't feel they're giving the love to businesses as they should. But I've heard some great information that a Facebook page is still a great source of engagement. Many of these days, the first place they look is a Facebook page if they're wanting to find more business. But Google Plus, with Google Hangouts, they're a rising social platform. I would strongly recommend Google Plus too. Um, thanks so much for the presentation, and I want to thank Swiki Media again for the opportunity to present organic social media.